What's going on YouTube? My name's Alex. This is Ask the Cheese Gaming. And you know what? We gotta have a talk. But quick disclaimer before I begin. If you are a huge fanboy of the most recent Mortal Kombat game, or an NRS shill, or you just absolutely love NRS, you could just go ahead and click off this video, hit the dislike button, call me Muckle's un Monkey's Uncle down in the comments, and have a wonderful blessed day. Now, still here? Ready for a talk? So the most recent Mortal Kombat game has been out now since end of September. You know what? I got a bone to pick with that game. It's a couple of things in that, that game that I take serious issue with. I've been a lifelong fan of the Mortal Kombat series pretty much all my life. Grew up playing the Mortal Kombat games in the original arcade. And then of course I had a Super Nintendo growing up. And first off, I'm just going to call it Mortal Kombat 12, because this is Mortal Kombat 1. And that's my first issue to, I have with it. Mortal Kombat 1? We already have a Mortal Kombat 1. Like, it's not as if it's like, you know, the first Mortal Kombat game. It's not the first one. No, it's the 12th in the series. So, Mortal Kombat 1? They tried the same garbage with Mortal Kombat 9. Instead, people just said, okay, Mortal Kombat. It's actually Mortal Kombat 9. So, Mortal Kombat 1, like... How lazy, you just took off the one for Mortal Kombat 11 and said, oh, brand new game. Even though it's an actual continuation of the storyline of Mortal Kombat 11. More on that later. So first off, the price. That game is just so astronomically overpriced, it's not even funny. I mean, $70 for the base game, which doesn't include the DLC. If you want the DLC, it's 110. So, with tax and everything else, it's actually over around 120. And then, if you want the premium edition, I believe that one's actually 300. It's like, in this day and age, who the hell can afford that? For all the DLC and everything else, I think I'd rather buy a bunch of, rather buy some groceries. There we go. Let's get a good uppercut going here. I am. Oh, really? I didn't kill him. Slight input delay, but that's okay. So like I said before, $120, you get all the DC DLC characters, which brings me to my second issue. But that doesn't give you anything, everything in the game, because the game on the main page has microtransactions. So you're telling me that this game is, you know, a... game that you paid $110 for if you wanted all the DLC characters and now say for instance you wanted the Halloween fatality oh that's $10 maybe you wanted the Christmas one $10 maybe you wanted a cool piece of gear because I don't know I think it was for Molina was your main oh six dollars uh, maybe you wanted this cool Johnny Cage skin say so six dollars oh sorry the Molina piece of gear I think was three so, you say 10, plus another 10, plus this other piece of gear, plus this other piece of skin, that takes you, what, up to $139 now? No, not 100, no, sorry, 129. Plus tax, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we'll say 139 for, round up a little bit for tax purposes. There we go, got him. And that's still, I'm sure there's going to be more microtransactions in the game that are being pushed hard. I mean, how much harder can NetherRealm Studios just sit there and just shill for people's credit cards? Like, are you kidding me? Like, come on now. Like, I mean, geez, just everybody just hand over your credit card to NetherRealm Studios, why don't we? There we go. Finishing move. Not a fatality in this game. Hey, and a flawless victory. And it's just the fact that it's right there on the you know, front page, as soon as you fire up the game. I mean, MK11 had microtransactions as well, but they weren't nearly as prominent or as forced. So it's like, you know, NRS, if you want to have all these extras and sell it all, okay, go for it. Make it a free-to-play game. Make it a game like, I don't know, say, you know, uh, you know, game that I play, Splitgate. Or Rocket League or Fortnite or something to that effect. Like, go for it. Make it free to play. 
and then you know extra for you know certain characters and skins and fatalities and stuff like that like hey why not have at it let yourselves go crazy but it's like you sitting there thinking that you're free to play game but it's fully priced game again seventy dollars for just the base game issue number two is the fact that you have a couple characters mainly Quan Chi and Ermac who are relegated to DLC who should have been ba main base roster but instead they get relegated to be DLC and now if people want to have those characters and the games who should characters that should have been in the main roster they have to pay extra just to have all those characters I'm going to fail this thing so magically. Oh, bummer. I need to get something to roll in my D-pad. So that's issue number two. Issue number three. The story in MK12 makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. I mean, dear God in heaven, that thing is just a giant, conjumbled, garbled mess of just absolute nonsense. I mean, it's supposed to be a retelling, but yet at the end of, spoiler alert, if you've never played MK11, still here? Okay. So at the end of MK11, we go back in time through, through Kung Lao, and he says that he's going to start a new timeline in a new era, and we're going to see Kung Lao, which I thought, hey, cool. Like, you know, we go back in time and see, you know, the great Kung Lao and get a prequel. Like, that could be a really cool concept. I think that'd be a lot of fun, like. Go back to the original first tournament from this one that was you know, referenced in this game story with, you know, Goro defeating the great Kung Lao and everything else and how Shang Tsung took over the tournament. Like, that could be a cool idea. Now, instead, it's a whole new thing, complete reimagining, another soft reboot. I think, and I'm about to lose to uh, Raiden here. Oh, well. Yep. Ooh, is he going to finish me? No, instead, he's just going to throw me. So, like, you know, like I said before, it just gets to be absolute nonsense. It just, it makes no sense. I mean, like, why reboot again? You rebooted the timeline after MK9, in between Armageddon and 9, and then you rebooted, kind of soft rebooted again uh, with 11, and now you're rebooting again? Like, enough is enough already. It just makes no sense. I mean, why do we constantly have to have these, you know, con constant reboots? Like... I mean, this, you know, timeline, the story is so, you know, such garbled nonsense. It's like now they're trying to go the Marvel's route of like, you know, oh, having this, you know, multiverse and all these other timelines and, you know, multiversals. And it's just, it just makes no sense. Like, it's just, I can't care. I can't wrap my brain around it. I mean, like, again, you know, go back to, you know, simpler, just tell the story of just a good tournament of, you know, good versus evil of, you know, the... Insane Conqueror trying to take over Earthrealm and, you know, the fight to save everybody. Oh, didn't get it. Didn't push it in in time. I think I was to think I had to be sweep distance and hold up, up, block. Ah, now we face Kano. Kano could be kind of tough. So, and speaking of story, I have a really major bone to pick with the story, which is within the story, there's a chapter for Molina, completely dedicated to pushing LGBTQIA alphabet rainbow agenda. Like, are you fucking kidding me at NetherRealm Studios? Why the hell is this shit in the game? Are, are you fucking kidding me? I'm not trying to sit here and play a fighting game to hear about how, you know, white men are bad and evil and toxic and everything else and how I need to support the alphabet community. And quick disclaimer, look, who you lay in bed with at night is your own business. You want to be a lady and you want to lay with another lady? Go for it. I'm happy for you. God bless you. I really am. You want to be a man, lay with another man at night? God bless you. Good for you. Again, I'm happy for you. Who you lay in bed with at night is your own business. I have no qualms about that. 
Hey, yeah, there we go. But just the fact that there's a whole chapter for Molina dedicated to pushing this agenda, dedicated to pushing, you know, gender ideology and alphabet politics and all this other crap. And I've noticed over the past couple games, it started creeping in really in MKX. And then it really got pretty big with MK11. I mean, you know, make out world great again. Like, come on now. And, you know, Shiva's intro dialogue, which, by the way, I did a whole video on that. If you guys want to go back and check that out, please do. I highly recommend you do if you want to hear more about that. You know, make out world great again. Shiva telling us that, you know, men are inherently the weaker race. I mean, it just gets to be just insanity. And part of what am I talking about here? Men can be totally uncovered in the video game, but women have to be totally covered up. But then... They claim that it's, oh, because we want realism in the fighting game. Like, okay, when what planet would a woman fight in high heels? Like, if you want to be a realistic and have your know, realistic, you know, fighting details in your fighting game, okay, go for it. Like, I say do it. Why not? I mean, there's just thousands upon thousands of years of cultures and warrior races and groups that you can pull from. Like, maybe you want to pull from... The Roman soldiers, uh, you know, under Caesar. Maybe you want to pull from the Spanish conquistadors. Maybe you want to pull from the Knights Templar. You know, maybe you want to pull from the Zinzuni tribes over in Africa or some of the other, you know, groups from back then. Like, you know, there's so many different armors and groups that you could pull from that would be realistic, that are, you know, real in history that you could use. I mean, why not make use of that if you're trying to go for this, you know, realistic effect within the fighting game like why not go for it live it up but to say that oh the ladies have to be fully covered because you know that's realistic even though they're in high heels but then you know the men are totally uncovered and then to have this agenda i mean it's just it's just insanity it makes no sense and all it does is create division but there's a reason for this there's a reason that all this is going on and i'm going to get into that right now NetherRealm Studios is owned by WB Games. WB Games is owned by Warner Brothers Interactive. Warner Brothers Interactive is a conglomerate of a whole bunch of other groups under the umbrella of Warner Discovery. Warner Discovery is owned by... Oh my, you're just going to spam the spear nonstop, huh? Warner Discovery is owned by AT&T. Whoops. In 2022, hold on, let me make sure I check my notes here, just to make sure. AT&T in 2022 had a net profit of 8.064 billion, yes, billion with a B, dollars. In 2023, they had a net profit of... Uh, 10.815. That was AT&T. Now, mind you, there was no new fighting game at that time, or new Mortal Kombat game. So they didn't have really Mortal Kombat. I'm sure WB had other games and other assets that were kind of helping them out, but, you know, NetherRealm Studios wasn't making a new fighting game. And like I said before, NetherRealm Studios is the baby of NetherRealm is... Warner Games, who's a conglomerate of Warner Media Interactive, who's a conglomerate. Now, it goes actually deeper than that. Warner Media Games has a whole bunch of different shareholders. Their biggest shareholder is a certain company by the name of Vanguard, who owns roughly 9%. They also have a whole bunch of others. Oh my God, I thought I had them. I wasn't really fully paying attention. I was, did take a couple notes. Vanguard alone has almost 10% of the shares of Warner Discovery. 35% of the shares of Warner Discovery are mutual fundings. And guess who the top three mutual fundings are for Warner Discovery? Three different Vanguard entities. So, the other group of mutual funding holdings 
who the heck owns them? So if you take the original 10% plus this, other, plus this other two of these three groups, that puts them up to 16% base. And I also saw their name listed again as something like, I think it was about 1.2. So that actually puts them... Oh my, wow, Kane is just gonna... just. Wow. So that puts them at least up to about 17% base stock. And that's not to say that they don't own some more of the, um, you know, mutual funds holdings or something else. I'm sure there's, you know... I'm sure they could have a lot more than, you know, we've actually seen. It wouldn't surprise me if their actually, actual listing is, uh, is you know, cool, easily at least 20%, at least. Come on, fatality me. Fa Aww, bummer. Man, Kano's just playing me super tough. It might take me a few tries. But like I said, so base 10%, plus they have a bunch of the shares of... The mutual fundings, and that's just for Vanguard alone. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a certain other name in there, namely one State Street. Anybody recognize these names? If you don't, go take a deep dive into who they are. I dare you. It's, you're going to be a little bit terrified. So, I don't fully buy the fact that Nether Realm is the one sitting there saying, oh yeah, let's just push all the agenda. I think it's actually someone else and one of these groups is saying, hey, you know, we want you to do this. And then I'm sure that there's people that work for NetherRealm Studios, namely one, I forgive, forgive me, I forget the guy's name off the top of my head, who's a very, very devout, you know, liberal activist. Wow, I can't even... For real? Oh my God, Kano. Wow, I should have stuck with Scorpion. You also have 16-bit, who I don't even know what pronoun to give it, them, they, whatever. We'll just call them it to make it easy. And I mean, a whole entire video could be written just about 16-bit alone, but we'll say that's a different discussion for a different day. But like I said, I play, I don't know about you guys, but I play video games to escape all those identity politics, not sit there and be lectured and told about, you know, all this other LGBTQIA gender ideology. And it's just, it saddens me that that's how far this game's fallen. It really does that, you know, instead of being able to just tell a good story and have a good fun to play fighting game, we got to sit here and be lectured about all this stuff. And it's like, just why? Why can't we just, you know, why can't we all just get along? It doesn't help anybody. Come on, let's take out Kano. Whoops. Ah! Bummer, they just don't want to use their finishing move on me, do they? I think we finally hit something going there, though. So it just saddens me that all this is in there, that it's constantly getting pushed more and more and deeper in each and every single game. And as a lifelong fan of the series, honestly, it breaks my heart to just see how far this f franchise and the series has fallen, that, you know, this is what we've gone to, that, you know, gone are the days of just telling a good story. And, and you know, NetherRealm used to go against the grain. They used to be the ones bucking the trend. I mean, heck, it was, you know, this fighting game franchise that was, you know, the reason the, uh, you know, MSR, ESRB, excuse me, I almost said MSRP, ESRB was, you know, even created. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, the Scorpion Spine Rip, I mean, there was, you know, uh, you know, Senate hearings and the you know federal government about this, and that's how you know the ES. But you know now this is what we're relegated to, pushing a bunch of you know a bunch of gender ideology, just political nonsense. I mean, just for what purpose? 
Look, you want to be a political av- activist? Fine. But keep your own personal politics out of the, the friggin' fighting game. You're there to do a job, not sit there and lecture me. You will, Like I said before, you want to be, you know, man sleeping with another man at night? Good for you. I'm happy for you. God bless you. Have fun. Who you lay in bed with at night is your own business. So to quickly recap, we got an overpriced game, a storyline that makes no sense, DLC characters which should be base roster, and a game that I'm sure will be you know resold and reskinned a bunch of times. Can we cheat this with a sweep, a little sweep strategy? Oh wow, you're just gonna come in like that, huh? Wow. Wow. We had him too. Did y'all see that? That counter? Ugh, brutal. And by the way, I took a couple notes about those numbers that I wanted to share, but there's been no script to this. There's been just, you know, some stuff in my head that I wanted to say and share. No script, just free floating idea. So, like I was recapping before, before I kind of got distracted, you know. Overpriced game, gender ideology, microtransactions, storyline that makes no sense. Did I miss anything? If you have any thoughts or opinions, feel free to comment them, them down below. Thanks for watching, everybody, and until next time.